welcome and let's talk about the UCAT. For starters, the UCAT is an admissions test used in the selection process by a consortium of universities in the UK, Australia, and New Zealand for their medical and dental degree programs. Take this test if you are aiming for medical courses at King's College London and University of Nottingham. We are proud that most of our students are in the 80th percentile and above, with scores between 2800 and 3100 out of a maximum of 3600, making them competitive applicants to top medical schools. So, what's on the test? Well, the UCAT is a two-hour, multiple-choice, computer-based test, which consists of five sections. Verbal reasoning, decision-making, quantitative reasoning, abstract reasoning, and situational judgment. The latter tests your capacity to understand real-world situations and to identify critical factors and appropriate behaviour in dealing with them. Also, this is the only UCAT section that uses a band scoring system, with band 1 being the highest performing band and 4 the lowest. Guiding you through the solutions is Lynn. She's a graduate of Yale and US College and is a highly proficient test taker. Lynn has obtained perfect scores in the ISAT, SAT Math, and PTE. Additionally, she has scored in the 99th percentile for the SAT and UCAT. Basically, you're in great hands! Now that you're more familiar with the format, let's get you acquainted with some sample questions. Before we begin, you may want to have pen and paper ready. In a moment, questions will pop up, and you are encouraged to try them out as we go along. Pause the video when you are attempting the question, and resume when you are done. Our expert coaches will then follow up with the solution. Are you ready for question 1? In UCAT Verbal Reasoning, you can only choose true if the statement is directly supported by evidence from the passage. And you can only choose false if the statement is directly disproven by evidence from the passage. If the information is not mentioned or discussed in the passage, or if the passage is inconclusive about it, you have to choose can't tell. For this question, the passage refers to Inverness as the northernmost city in the UK, which makes it very tempting to choose true as our answer. However, beware of the absolute language. No city is further north, as well as the shift in terms. The passage specifically says that Inverness is the northernmost city in the UK, but this specification is omitted from the statement in the question. This omission actually changes everything. There could very well be cities outside the UK that are further north than Inverness. Since the passage doesn't give us any information about any northern cities outside the UK, the answer for this question has to be C, can't tell. Decision-making questions love to trip you up with tongue-twisting and also brain-twisting sentences that are sometimes just downright nonsensical. The best way to tackle this type of questions is by drawing a Venn diagram. From the given information, there should be no intersection between embrace the downtrodden and follow dogmas, and a small intersection between follow dogmas and truly spiritual. It is unknown whether or not embrace the downtrodden and truly spiritual intersect. Based on this, we can put no for both the first and the second conclusions. There is no information given about the relationship between embrace the downtrodden and truly spiritual, so we cannot conclude whether or how much they overlap. 
The third conclusion does follow from the information. The statement that few who follow dogmas are truly spiritual implies that there are others who do follow dogmas and are not truly spiritual. The fourth conclusion follows directly from the fact that there is no overlap between follow dogmas and embrace the downtrodden. For the fifth conclusion, again, we know that a person who follows dogmas cannot embrace the downtrodden, since there is no overlap between these two categories. Therefore, we can put no for this conclusion without even needing to consider the part about being truly spiritual. Busy patterns like this can make it extremely difficult to identify the rules behind each set. One way to start is to scrutinize all the six boxes in one set, either set A or set B, and look for any commonality that applies to all of them. This common feature could be anything, maybe a recurring shape or a combination of recurring shapes, some rules for shading or maybe arrangement, or numerical relationships between the different components, and so on. In this question, everything is unshaded, so we can at least eliminate the shading and zoom in on the other features, such as shape, number, or arrangement. By comparing the six boxes in set A, you may find that while the other shapes, like hearts, triangles and squares may be present in some boxes and then disappear from others, all six boxes contain at least two circles. This is a great start. Once you find a possible rule for set A, turn to the other set to see if a similar rule can also be found in set B. Indeed, in set B, all six boxes contain at least two squares. With this in mind, we can attempt to classify our test shape into either sets A, set B, or neither. Since the test shape contains two circles, we expect it to fall into set A, which is indeed the correct answer. However, there is a plot twist. The rule that we just identified is actually wrong, or at least it's incomplete. The actual rule for set A is that each box must contain a pair of circles that are adjacent, either horizontally, vertically, or diagonally, to each other. And likewise, in set B, each box must contain a pair of squares that are adjacent to each other. This means that if the test shape contained two circles that are not next to each other, our answer would have been wrong. Now, that may sound unnerving, but as you have seen, even if we only identify part of the actual rule, we still stand a fairly good chance of selecting the correct answer. Remember that in the abstract reasoning section, you only have less than 15 seconds on average to spend on each question, so don't dwell too long on any question. Once you have found something, just go with that instinct, choose your answer, and move on. How did you fare? And no worries if you weren't quite there. To best gauge your performance, we encourage you to sit for a diagnostic test. Lucky for you, Icon Plus administers free diagnostic tests and you can register for it directly on our website. With over 20 years of experience coaching students, Icon Plus is the go-to center for all your test prep needs. Our expert coaches hail from leading institutions and our resources are unparalleled. Come chat with your consultants about how we can best support your learning goals. We look forward to meeting you and all the best as you take your first step to success.